This videotape will show you the three kinds of flames used in various types of oxyacetylene welding. The neutral flame, the oxidizing flame, and the carbonizing flame. Although oxyacetylene welding has been surpassed by other welding processes, it is still extensively used for bending, straightening, preheating, cutting, braze welding, and welding of most low alloy steels and most non-ferrous metals. After viewing this videotape, you will be able to list the safety gear and precautions you should use while operating the oxyacetylene welding equipment. Describe how to adjust the torch to produce a neutral flame, a carbonizing flame, or an oxidizing flame. And write down how the various flames are normally used in the oxyacetylene welding process. Before starting to do any kind of welding, make sure that your body is properly protected and your eyes properly shielded. Put on your welding cap to protect your hair and scalp from hot metal sparks. And put on the gas welding goggles with a number five shade lens. Keep your collar button to protect your neck from hot sparks. Turn down cuffs and close pocket flaps so that hot sparks cannot collect in them. To protect your hands from heat and spatter, always wear your welding gloves while welding. Before you begin any welding operation, you must determine the proper size tip and gas pressure adjustment for the job. For this demonstration, we will use a number five tip, which is used for welding one eighth inch metal. The size of the tip will depend greatly upon the thickness of the metal to be welded. Gas welding tips vary in size from a triple aught, which has the smallest opening and is used on light gauge sheet metal, to larger sizes, which are used for welding metal one inch thick or greater. The gas pressures will vary with the size of the tips. The larger the tip, the higher the pressure setting used. A manufacturer's chart is used to determine the proper oxygen and acetylene pressures to use with each tip. This is necessary because pressures vary somewhat with different types of torches and with different models made by a single manufacturer. After you have made the necessary safety checks and adjustments, it is always a good idea to clean the welding tip with a tip cleaner before each use. Tip cleaner removes any dirt or slag which may have stuck to the orifice. You are now ready to light the torch. Open the acetylene needle valve on the torch about a quarter turn. With the tip pointing toward the workbench or floor, strike the spark lighter about an inch from the end of the tip to ignite the acetylene. The acetylene flame is pale yellow inside with a deep yellow surrounding it and is smoky on the outer tip of the flame. Open the acetylene valve on the torch slowly until the smoke leaves the end of the flame. This shows that you are feeding the proper amount of acetylene to the tip. With the acetylene adjusted, you are now ready to make the other adjustments to produce a neutral flame. Open the oxygen valve on the torch slowly. Notice the brilliant acetylene flame turning to a purple color. You will also see a small greenish colored cone forming on the inside. As you slowly increase the flow of oxygen, the inner cone begins to lose its blurred edges. Notice the pointed smooth inner cone, surrounded by a second bluish luminous cone. Also, you should hear a soft purring sound rather than a sharp irritating hiss. This will tell you that the neutral flame is correctly adjusted. The tip of the inner cone is the hottest part of the flame, reaching a temperature of approximately 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The shape may be influenced by the shape of the orifice, the cleanliness of the tip passage, and the accuracy of the pressure of the gases. The cone produced by a small tip will vary from a pointed to a semi-pointed shape. Cones from a medium-sized tip will vary from a semi-pointed to a medium shape. 
and cones from a large tip will vary from a semi-blunt to a blunt shape. A neutral flame is used for welding all metals, including cast iron, malleable iron, wrought iron, and high-strength rods. Another type of flame used in oxyacetylene welding is the carbonizing or reducing flame. This flame is produced with the same amount of acetylene, but less oxygen than the neutral flame. To produce the carbonizing flame, open the acetylene needle valve on the torch about a quarter turn and ignite the acetylene with the spark lighter. Adjust the acetylene valve to produce a smokeless acetylene flame. Open the oxygen needle valve on the torch slowly. As you increase the oxygen, the acetylene flame turns to a purple color and the greenish color inner cone starts to form. When you notice that the inner cone still has an irregular or feathered shape, stop adding oxygen. A properly adjusted carbonizing flame should have three flame zones, an intense white inner cone, an intermediate white cone with feathered edges, and the bluish colored outer envelope. The intermediate cone should be about twice the length of the inner cone. The temperature at the tip of the inner cone of the carbonizing flame is about 5,700 degrees Fahrenheit. This type of flame is used for brazing and soldering low carbon steel, cast steel, nickel steel, chrome steel, copper and brass, and for hard facing. The third type of welding flame you may use in oxyacetylene welding is the oxidizing flame. This flame is produced with the same amount of acetylene, but more oxygen than a neutral flame. To produce this flame, follow the same lighting procedure as before. Open the acetylene needle valve about a quarter turn and ignite the gas with a spark lighter. Again, adjust the needle valve until you get a smokeless acetylene flame. Open the oxygen needle valve slowly until the inner cone loses the feathery edge and becomes pointed and smooth. This is a neutral flame. Increase the oxygen supply until the inner cone is very sharp and is shorter than it was in the neutral flame. Notice that the torch makes a loud hissing noise because of the excess oxygen. The oxidizing flame is the least used of the three flames for welding, as red-hot steel burns rapidly in the presence of excess oxygen. The temperature at the tip of the cone is approximately 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit. You would use the oxidizing flame when welding sheet brass, cast brass, or bronze. Let's review what you have seen in this videotape. Before doing any welding, you must protect your body and your eyes with the proper safety gear. You saw the proper procedures to adjust the oxyacetylene equipment to produce a neutral flame, a carbonizing flame, and an oxidizing flame. And you were given the metals on which each oxyacetylene welding flame is used. The ability to quickly and accurately produce the suitable flame for a given job is a major requirement for anyone interested in welding.